Uh, when I looked at the theme, it actually stimulated the physician scientist in me, and I thought that I should use this platform to speak about the challenges for keeping up the workforce of physician scientists. Uh, my talk today would briefly touch upon the importance of physician scientists in translational uh, research, their fears, their challenges, the career path dilemmas while choosing the research-dominated uh, career path. And I would also like to give some prospects from my early career experience, uh, which may help in strengthening the workforce for a brighter future of interdisciplinary research. Uh, so uh, we, as has been already discussed uh, by earlier speakers, translational health uh, research involves identifying the important health issues uh, from the bedside, answering them using interdisciplinary approach, and using new knowledge generated back in the clinical practice and health decisions. But as simple as it may sound, there are certain roadblocks um, to this approach, and biggest being that the biomedical and the clinical disciplines working in silos. Due to this fragmented infrastructure, there is a, a deep gap between clinicians and biomedical scientists. Uh, this slide shows a valley of death. So if you can see, there are two people sitting on the two sides of the valley, and both of them are, there's a wee, very weak bridge in between them. And both of, both of them are really feared of crossing the bridge on the other side. So possibly this is the scenario of research today for us. Uh, research is basically the fragmentation or the two people sitting on the, uh, opposite side fearing to cross the bridge is the main hurdle or the roadblock for a translational research. Similarly, this, uh, um, and uh, this was very well illustrated in the recent pandemic, which uh, the emergence of which actually affected uh, virtually every uh, aspect of life and not with, uh, which was not witnessed recently. And the integrated interdisciplinary approach helped us in finding quick solutions and overcoming the pandemic. And it's needless to say that the pandemic is a stark reminder that our young generation must be trained both in the art of science and of medicine, in particular with an eye toward developing t uh, talent that can bridge the gap between science and medicine. Now again, my slide has a, a valley, but this time uh, there's a bridge, a very strong one, which you can see. So this bridge, I would, I would recognize this bridge as the physician scientist. So physicians, uh, phys physician sciences, scientists are uniquely positioned to bridge the gap between the practicing clinicians and the biomedical scientists, but many challenges threaten their career path for sure. Uh, arguably, I would say no other professional has played more prominent role than physician scientists in accelerating the translational and fundamental scientific discoveries to clinical implementation. Uh, I'll just move on to the challenges, though this is a very blending career which offers possibility of stimulating and fulfilling career, but there, are uh, but there is a, grow, a growing shortage of training following this path. And uh, why is it that? Because young physicians still must overcome multiple hurdles to pursue the research with nominating career, including lack of clarity of their career path, no sensitization to research in the early years. Uh, of course, there are challenges in finding and maintaining the mentors, difficulty in looking at the bigger picture, an integrated approach due to fragmented infrastructure, and the obligations to change significant time, uh, significant time in revenue generating activities such as uh, clinical care. And to combat this uh, challenge, there are certain aspects uh, which we can use, and these prospects are what I could gather from the early years of my uh, uh, life as a physician scientist. And most of them are probably just echoing of what already the speakers have mentioned. So uh, at different levels of a physician, uh, there could be different sensitization or different strengthening that can be done. Uh, in order to have a, a physician scientist workforce eventually, uh, 
if we start early with, at MBBS level or at the graduation level, uh, with the analytical thinking and innovating thinking being inculcated at that early age, with regular me research methodology workshops, short research fellowships, collaborations of medical colleges and research institutions for hands-on research experiences. So uh, we actually had these kinds of things in our medical college, so I know that they were there, but they are not very prominently distributed across India as such of now. Uh, while I was doing my MD thesis, I remember, I, since I did my edit in community medicine, so I was like, no research that time, but then for other departments, I can say, they, the thesis was like, let's, can you just tell, give me this result, I just want the result to be like showing this. They did not have any idea what kind of design, analytical issues, or methodology that they are following. They would just say that this is the result that I want. So probably the thesis should focus more on research questions, methodology, plan of analysis. Um, then of course the research environments with the mentors, protected time for research, even uh, with a clinical, um, uh, clinical, clinical oriented uh, MD, and the sensitization for career paths in the clinical research. And once we become an academic faculty, we should actually give a protected time to donate for research, and appropriate funding should be awarded for, for them to carry out their research. There could be added courses, like there is a course for MSc clinical research, PhD courses, and early career fellowships that are available nowadays for anyone who chooses this path to follow eventually and become a, a leaders in, the, uh, in, the, in research as physician scientists. Okay, so other important interventions that I could identify and probably I'm just echoing what has been said in the forum today. Um, a dedicated mentorship, it is anyhow very hard to find a good mentor and maintaining that mentorship relationship the mentors should themselves be trained to be able to train a physician scientist. So uh, mentors should emerge from the clinical research and should have dedicated time of mentorship. The fellowships are uh, more programs focused on young scientists with focus on physician scientists should be there. I am aware that there are a lot many fellowships that are already available. But for a physician scientist particularly, I find it uh, that that thing is kind of lacking just now and there are very few fellowships that are currently available. Uh, and of course, there's a, uh, there should be a clear and lucrative career trajectory for the medical doctor to take an informed decision and attract more young physician scientists to the, uh, to the research mode. So what career paths do, can we choose as a, as a medical doctor? So uh, after doing the MBBS, probably you will go for your MD and become an academic faculty, and then you do research in your institution, or you may do MD and get an opportunity to get into research uh, institute like I did. And, uh, or you can do PhD just after MBBS and go into research institutes or industries where there is a high demand of uh, physician scientists. So some uh, career opportunities that I would like to highlight here. Um, so there are different research government bodies that offer various long and short term fellowships to promote physician scientists. At THSTI we have early career fellowships for young physicians which gives them opportunity to get associated with our organization and grow as a physician scientist in domains of their interest. DBT Welcome Trust also offers uh, grants for physician scientists with focus funds for their research work. Uh, physician scientists are integrated into complex ecosystem of biopharma industry. Clinical investigators are engaged for designing and conduct of cl uh, key clinical trials required for proof of human efficacy. 
Even the non-government organizations uh, may uh, play a progressively larger role in supporting and developing of clinician scientists, not only the involved in training and offering job, but also sponsor medical students for further degrees like PhD. Medical colleges with dedicated research departments also offer uh, specific scientific positions to medical doctors. So um, I have been privileged to be a part of this very large interdisciplinary program which is called as Garbini. Garbini stands for Interdisciplinary Group for Advanced Research on Birth Outcome, DBT India Initiative. And we are a clean of clinicians, epidemiologists, scientists, and experts of genetic, proteonomic, microbiome, and image science working towards a common goal of finding risk factors associated with preterm birth and possible solutions to reduce them. So uh, with this experience of mine, I can say if, like, if even one of these is missing, we possibly might not be able to find the true solution or true translational research would happen without uh, the integrated or interdisciplinary research. And I'm glad that we, have, we are already on this path. So my joy is that despite hurdles, a physician scientist has a unique career path is an outlier with different purpose, has the privilege of combining the responsibility of taking care of human life with a curiosity-driven scientific mind. Um, I do have a few questions for, the, for all of you. Should increasing the private sector role in research funding be explored? Should government funding agencies and academic medical centers be only funding source for preparing the next generation? Um, could a con Commitment from research organizations to research training from medical school through residency help sustain and even expand the physician scientist workforce. So I will leave the forum with uh, these questions that I had in mind, and I thought I should put it here. No forum can be better to be discussing this. These are a few references for my presentation today. Thank you, everyone, for your kind interest.